The things that we give our time to in life have a tendency to be happy to take as much of it as we're willing to give, and more and more. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, a thing you want or not, eventually you find you just have no more time left to give. I've been thinking a lot about time lately, specifically in how I spend it and how it's not even a matter of spending a lot of time, it's a matter of just how it's consumed. The things you give time to will happily take so much more time from you if you let them. And it doesn't even have to be bad things. A lot of it can be very good things, things that you've always wanted, things that you wished you had, and then suddenly you realize you're completely out of time. And that's not a place that I want to be, especially as I'm trying to focus on what I want to build for the future. The things I really want to work on in life, the things that I really want to put effort into, require a lot of time. And if that time just vanishes and all of a sudden my cup ends up empty, I'll have nothing left to invest in those things that I'm dying to put together. Hopefully not actually dying, you know, I really want to put together. So this is what feels obvious then, but it becomes paramount, which is I need to do whatever I can to defend the time that I have and to allocate it appropriately to the things that I want to accomplish. We started the year by talking about goals for the year and health and video are my two main principal goals, themes for the year, like reclaiming the fun and focusing. So then it seems paramount to me that the very first thing that I need to do if I'm going to be able to actually accomplish these things that I'm setting out to is to protect the time necessary to actually focus on them. Things like health, exercise, time with friends, making videos, editing, shooting, all these things require uninterrupted blocks of time that if I don't protect, I'm gonna lose very easily and very quickly. The funny thing, and possibly the trickiest thing, is that when I started cutting things out to try and get down to, you know, not having too much on my plate, I started out with the things that I didn't like, the things that you could classify maybe as bad things or the things that I didn't really want in life. And at first that was actually also really hard because some of those things you find yourself dependent on or you have an unhealthy relationship with it and that makes it much harder to actually let go of it. But then the trickier part becomes, how do you cut out the things that you like and the the, the people that you want to spend time with and the projects that you really want to work on, all the things that you could be doing with your time, there's an infinite number of ways to spend your time, but the amount of time that you have is not infinite and you have to choose what and how you spend it. And that's something that for me has always been particularly tricky because I don't like the idea of having limits. Like I want to be, I feel like I should be unlimited. Like I should be able to do all the things and see all the places and be friends with every person, eat all the food, whatever it is. And the, the fact is that I, I can't. So how do I make the decisions on what to cut out and what to add back in, especially when so many of those things are good things. I'm, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. I guess that's kind of what this whole video is about. Yeah. Three things basically then that I need to work on cutting back on more than anything are probably projects, unnecessary communications, and socializing in a variety of ways. All good things, all things I love, and therefore all things that can absolutely destroy me. The obvious one, my, my bane basically, is projects. If you've been following me for any period of time, you know that I love brand new projects and I love big ambitious projects, ones that I probably, you know, shouldn't be getting myself too deeply into. And yet, I just can't seem to help myself. And it's the number one thing that I have needed to cut out recently, as I've explained in my last video, through some wake up calls, but also just in general, 
you, you can only focus on one thing at a time, which is not something that I really like to hear, but is genuinely very, very true. I don't know if you've ever heard of the analogy of the flashlight versus the laser. I'm sure you have, but that idea that to have a real impact, to like get the most out of the energy that you have, you really need to focus in on the smallest point possible. And if you're broad like a flashlight, you know, you might illuminate an area around you, but you're not gonna cut through anything anytime soon. Certainly not gonna burn anything. And that is what I'm trying to work on. I've cut out the secret projects for the most part, still qualifying it here obviously, but anything that doesn't have to do directly with video, I'm putting the pause on because I've realized if I really want to make the biggest impact I can, for my career, for the future, for everything that I'm trying to do, project-wise, I need to focus. Probably the most helpful tool in approaching this has been to look out into the future five or 10 years and to try and be as specific as I can possibly be about what I want life to look like in five to 10 years. If I can really picture it, sit down, write it out, what does my day look like? What does my job look like? What do my relationships look like? All of that. If I have these dreams, five, 10 years out, then what are the goals that are gonna get me there over the next few years? And taking those goals, what are the plans that are gonna actually execute on those goals? And if anything I'm doing now, projects or otherwise, don't align with that, then I know I need to cut it. But of course, actually cutting these things proves to be probably the most difficult thing. You've seen over the last few years how I've had my goal boards and looked at goal maps, looked at how I wanna set my life up, and I think I've gotten pretty close to paring it all down to what it needs to be, but the act of actually doing the clipping is the part that's probably the most painful, and at least is the part that I know that I certainly am, you know, only now I feel like getting on top of. I think the trickiest thing when it comes to time management, especially for me personally, is the difference between cutting out good and bad. It's not even about cutting out bad things, it's actually cutting out the good things that could fill your life up to the brim. But take the space of the things that you want to be focusing on more than anything. Socializing is one of those things for me. I love spending time in community with friends especially, or just meeting new people. Uh, one of the things I loved most about being a tour guide when I used to work out of the Peloton as a bike tour guide was just the sheer volume of interesting new people that you could meet literally every day. I absolutely, absolutely loved that. And there's a part of that that I miss, but it's really easy for me to fall into an endless spiral of just talking to people uh, forever. And that's a good thing. There's nothing bad about that, but it takes time and energy away from the things that I want to be focusing on as far as making the best video that I can make for you or even health, like exercising or going home and eating. I haven't gone home and eaten lunch and it's probably almost one o'clock. So that's one of the reasons I actually don't come down here that often anymore. It's not because I don't want to, it's not because I don't enjoy it, but I'm in a place where I'm trying to cut down as much as possible. I cut all the way down to the very bare minimum and then slowly add back in, you know, to have a good balance of the good and the great, I guess, way of thinking about it. Don't tell anybody that I, that, I mean, this can be great. <laughs> I'll work on, I'll work on clarifying this. It may sound counterintuitive, but one of the best ways that I've found to find the things that I really want to do the most is to put everything I could do down on paper, see it all, and then usually it comes to the surface pretty quickly, like, oh yeah, that, that's what I want to be doing. One of the other ways that I'm focusing in a lot is by brain dumping. So I have this little book that is focused on the fun and dumping all the things that I think I can do this year to have fun within the realm of focus that I have. See it on paper and then throw away the ideas that don't work. And it's fun on its own to dream. Speaking of fun, I'm on my way to see my friend Charlie perform a little bit of stand-up comedy. A little five minute set. No idea what else I'm getting myself into here, but I told myself during COVID that I wanted to see more shows, more theater, more comedy when we were able to again, and uh, we're able to again. So I'm trying to live up to the promise to myself. And so far, it's been worth it. It's hard not to 
have drinks when I need to be losing weight. Trying to come up with some last minute jokes? Well, my everything's last minute. <laughs> Perfect. I'm not even that. What are you doing with that? Nothing. What are you doing? This is my jet. Charlie gave me a time that was 30 minutes early, so I'm gonna sit here and work on my little book, too. East camp. Make some noise for Charlie Molliner. Unnecessary communications are everything from emails to social media. Email is actually a really good example of what I said earlier when I said that whatever you're willing to give time to will inherently take more of your time. This overtime? Uh, why is there always? If you get a reputation for being really responsive to emails, suddenly you get a lot more emails. And you go from having a few emails to having more emails to having a lot of emails that people expect you to respond to really quickly. And if you can manage to only respond to the urgent ones and then kind of ignore the rest until you have time, or just ignore them forever if they're not important at all or spam or whatever else, suddenly you get fewer emails and you still get what you absolutely need to done, but you don't find yourself completely inundated by emails. That's the email example. Social media is a completely different thing. I think we all end up talking about social media and the ills and how we want to get away from it a whole lot. Uh, and so it doesn't come as a surprise that it's something that I want to avoid using as much as I possibly can. But where email is a one-to-one -one thing and whatever rewards or punishments come from your response time are going to be a one-to-one -one individual human-based response, social media is directly engineered to only really reward engagement. And the more time you spend on it, the more that it will reward you, especially Facebook products. And it's one of those things that just kind of makes me feel icky and I want to get away from as much as humanly possible. But it's also one of those things that it, if you start doom scrolling, if you keep swiping around, it'll, it'll take all the time that you have. Hours will go by and all of a sudden you'll be like, what have I accomplished today? Or have I even eaten? So similarly, I've tried to get off of pretty much all social media as much as possible unless I have a specific reason to get on it, to share something or I want to look something up or interact in a particular way. And it has been wonderful. I've been reading more books. I've been sleeping more. I, I very intentionally plug my phone in downstairs. I sleep upstairs and my alarm goes off down here, forcing me to get out of bed, but it also means I can't use it when I am upstairs. And it makes a really, really big difference for my mental and emotional health to not always be scrolling on the phone. Of course, the one challenge to getting off of Instagram entirely is when you have friends that will only communicate with you via Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it a little harder, but hey, you know, it's worth it. Thanks for the workout class. Thank you. That was so fun. Good. Merry Christmas to me. Yeah, Merry Christmas. She gifted me a workout class. You would it as, uh, I guess berries you were saying, it's not much. Yeah, that's like a berry starter pack. All right, I'm ready for the real thing. <laughs> oh yeah. I've struggled with this a lot in the past, actually. One of the things that I have done with creators that I love is kind of project my own work ethic onto them in a really weird way where back when I was vlogging daily especially, anytime anybody took a break or wasn't filming when I was filming, I would actually get like, I was like, what the heck are they doing? Like why, why if I can do it, they can, I don't know, I get really, I would get kind of upset. And I'm embarrassed about that now because I came to realize like they're being healthy. And one of the, I will name names as far as like Colbert and John Oliver because they're big enough and they don't care that I exist. But whenever they would go on breaks and they go on pretty long breaks, good vacations, I would just be like, I, but I, I'm relying on you guys for like regular, my regular dose of, of sadness actually, generally from those two. And in reality, I was really wrestling with just like how much I was working and I was working way too much. And obviously it's nice to have consistency from the creators that we love, but they also need to take care of themselves. And now I recognize the health in taking that time. 
obviously, because I've started doing it myself. And I can imagine that there are people that are also frustrated with that because they've come to expect maybe daily content from me or weekly content or whenever I've taken a break. I get what it is to miss somebody being there regularly, present in your life. And that's actually my goal ultimately in reducing how present I am is so that I can be present for the long term. That's my goal at least. Also 11 miles, maybe 12. If I run another half mile or so, I'm gonna get 12 miles in for my first run of 2022. Seems like an appropriate number. Good way to start the year. You, if you start off high, you know, you can slack off later. So to recap, basically by cutting out everything that I possibly can from projects to socializing and unnecessary levels of communication, whether that's an email or DMs or just scrolling on social media, I've been able to recapture a lot of time and now slowly build in the things that I actually want to do on that front while prioritizing my health, relationships, and the work that is most important that I focus on. Which is really funny to realize that a lot of these things like socializing and uh, social media and just spending time writing little emails and so forth ends up being just a form of procrastination when like sitting down to make a video can be, uh, you know, a little bit daunting sometimes. And of course, wherever people are involved, especially between the socializing and the communication side of things, I, you know, struggle a little bit at being a recovering people pleaser that I am, but I've learned so much. It's okay to let go. It's okay to just kind of let everything drop, look around, and again, deal with what's urgent, deal with what's really important, but then to just kind of take your time with everything else and see how the world warps around you and kind of accommodates whatever your priorities are to some degree. Obviously, not doesn't always work that way, but hopefully it works that way pretty well. I definitely feel like I've managed to reclaim a lot of my time and a lot of my energy. And this whole long, slow road out of burnout has been very much helped and enabled by dropping a lot. A lot of the stuff that I dropped, I did because I burned out. And it was kind of in recognizing over time, like, oh wait, the world did not fall apart when I stopped looking at my Instagram DMs or when I stopped uh, responding to every email as soon as I got it. When I put my biggest, most favorite projects on hold for a short period of time or indefinitely, or when I said no to going to that party that I would have liked to have gone to, but I was a little bit too tired at the moment. For some of you, none of this is very difficult, but for me, a lot of that was very, very hard. And in doing it, I've learned a ton about just how free I can be to say no, to walk away, to just kind of take some time. And it's really, really good. It's really helpful. I hope I, that you might find that helpful as well uh, if you're watching this. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. Maybe share it with somebody that you think could use it, somebody who struggles a little bit with managing their time perhaps out there. Hopefully they don't pick up on the fact that that's why you shared it with them until this very moment. And now they're like, oh, well, that's why. And of course, if you really enjoyed the video uh, and you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if I might have earned your subscription with this. And of course, thanks to my patrons whose lovely names you're seeing scrolling on the screen right now. I'm so grateful for them as well, just as I'm grateful for all of you for watching. And I just hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever it is you are. I'll see you again, bright and early one of these mornings sometime soon. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take some time to sleep some time. I was going to, I had something clever to say there, but who needs to be clever? Nobody has the time for that. I'm going to stop talking about time now. Let's up. I'll see. I'll see you soon.